visit with them. Yep. All eyes on Austin this afternoon. Governor Abbott and his task force laying out plans to reopen the Texas economy. Yeah, the press conference is underway. Let's listen in. First time in American history, a federal disaster has been declared for all 50 states. Almost 700,000 Americans have been infected with COVID-19. More than 35,000 of them have tragically lost their lives. Economic damage has hit even more Americans than the coronavirus itself. More than 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment. More than a million Texans have filed unemployment claims. Businesses have shuttered. Paychecks have disappeared. Food bank lines are swelling across Texas as more families seek food that they desperately need. Well, in typical Texas fashion, you have come together to support one another. You've made personal sacrifices to ensure that our state slows the spread of COVID-19. You helped to reduce the number of Texans who needed hospital care. You truly helped to save lives. Now, Texas needs you to continue those efforts, but I want you to know that we are especially grateful for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and all medical personnel who have been battling on the front line against this invisible enemy. We're also thankful to the unsung heroes serving as child care staff, grocery clerks, food service providers, and the folks who clean our hospitals. And we're grateful for President Trump, Vice President Pence, and the entire Trump administration for being available to me and my fellow governors 24-7 throughout this entire pandemic. I also want to recognize the members of the Texas House and Texas Senate for their ongoing leadership in their districts. And I want to recognize all of our local leaders for their continued partnership as we collectively respond to the coronavirus in Texas. Because of the efforts by everyone to slow the spread, we're now beginning to see glimmers that the worst of COVID-19 may soon be behind us. The number of infections and hospitalizations is beginning to level off. We have a steady supply of PPE like face masks. We have plenty of hospital rooms and ventilators to treat our fellow Texans and the deaths while far too high, will not come close to the early dire predictions. And I'll add this, Texas has the second most recoveries from COVID-19 of all states in America. We have demonstrated that we can corral the coronavirus. We continue increasing our testing capabilities to help us identify and care for Texans who have COVID-19. New strategies are being used by private businesses and the public sector to contain the coronavirus. Things like checking temperature, distancing practices, and better sanitation standards. We've shown that we can both continue our efforts to contain the coronavirus while also adopting safe standards that will allow us to begin the process of reopening business in Texas. So today I'm issuing an executive order, an executive order that outlines how we go about opening the Texas economy, helping you return to work using the safest standards to contain the coronavirus. Now, in opening Texas, we must be guided by data and by doctors. We must put health and safety first. We must prioritize protecting our most vulnerable populations. We will be getting input from medical professionals as well as business and community leaders to determine the safe and sure way to reopen business in Texas without spurring the spread of the coronavirus. To guide this effort, I have formed a statewide strike force 
to open Texas. The, the team includes Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Speaker of the House Dennis Bonin, Attorney General Kim Paxton, and Comptroller Glenn Hager. They are joined by a team of nationally recognized medical advisors who will inform us about the best health care standards to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Those advisors include the Commissioner for State Health Services, Dr. John Hellerstedt. They also include Dr. Mark McClellan. He served both as FDA Commissioner and Medicaid and Medicare Administrator for the United States of America. It also includes an infectious disease specialist and director of testing and tracing of COVID-19 at the University of Texas Dell Medical School, Dr. Parker Hudson. And they include Dr. John Zerwas, the executive vice chancellor for health affairs at the University of Texas system. They will work together to develop a medical architecture to comprehensively test and trace COVID-19 that will enable Texas to gradually and safely begin the process of returning to work and returning to other activities while we wait for the immunizations that will end the threat of COVID-19. Our medical team will work with an advisory committee of successful business and community leaders who will share information and innovative ideas to help businesses strategically reopen while also containing the spread of the coronavirus. They include entrepreneurs like Kendra Scott and Mattress Matt Jim McInville, world-renowned tech leaders like Michael Dell and Robert Smith, economic development leaders like Ross Perot and Bob Rowland, small business leaders like Arcelia Acosta and Massey Villarreal, economic experts like Richard Fisher, the former president and CEO of the Federal Reserve in Dallas. Dining and entertainment trailblazers like Tillman Fertitta and uh, uh, Ballas uh, uh, Miller of Bill Miller's Restaurants in San Antonio, Texas. Nonprofit organizations, uh, leaders like Nancy Kinder and Kirk Watson the founding dean of the University of Houston Hobby School of Public Affairs. This team will collaborate with working groups to open up Texas while keeping our communities safe. They will be led by a chairman who has successfully run businesses and knows his way around the Capitol, James Huffines. He will preside over a full-time staff spearheaded by Mike Toomey, a proven chief operating officer who knows how to quickly deliver results. I want you to know that I've already begun working with this team about next steps for Texas. James Huffines and the full-time staff have been working around the clock, and the team of advisors has already finished their first meeting, and they have begun the process of making recommendations. As a result of our combined efforts, I am issuing executive orders today that will begin the process of opening Texas. Now understand this, opening Texas must occur in stages. Obviously not all businesses can open all at once on May the 1st. Some businesses, if fully open without better distancing standards, would be more likely to set us back rather than to propel us forward. A more strategic approach is required to ensure that we don't reopen only to have to shut down once again. First will be openings announced today that include activities that should pose minimal or no threat to expanding COVID-19. Second, additional openings will be announced on April the 27th after further input from the advisors and the medical staff. Third, even more openings will be announced in May when it is determined that the infection rate continues to decline, that hospital capacity remains available, and when testing capacities are sufficient to detect and contain outbreaks of COVID-19. The first executive order today establishes the governor's strike force to open Texas. 
it sets out the organization and the duties of the strike force. They will gather information and make recommendations about ways that businesses can reopen, as well as the safe practices those businesses should use. My next executive order focuses on doctors, nurses, hospitals, and medical staff. Many doctors and nurses have been sidelined because of the need to postpone non-essential medical procedures. That was done to free up hospital capacity and the PPE needed to treat COVID-19 patients. Well, today, Texas has plenty of hospital capacity. We have a solid supply chain of PPE, and many of our doctors and nurses have patients who desperately need medical treatment. It is time to allow those doctors and nurses to return to work. However, it must be done in ways to ensure that we will be able to treat COVID-19 patients. Adequate supplies of hospital beds and PPE must be maintained to ensure that all COVID-19 needs are met. So, effective April the 22nd, which obviously is next week, current restrictions on surgery will be loosened. This will allow doctors to diagnose and treat more medical conditions without needing to get an exception. Just one example of this would be a diagnostic test for suspected cancer. Now, while loosening restrictions for doctors, we are enhancing standards to protect our vulnerable seniors who live in nursing homes and assisted living centers. To protect against COVID-19 getting into those living centers, we are requiring infection control policies and we are minimizing the movement of staff between those facilities. Next is my executive order about the retail sector in Texas. Retailers are such an important part of our economy. They provide you with products that you need and want, and they create so many jobs. During our battle with COVID-19 over the past month and a half, we've seen some retailers sell products without customers going into stores and hence reducing exposure to the coronavirus. You simply order the product and you pick it up or have it delivered to you. Because we've seen that this model works while also containing COVID-19, we believe that all stores in Texas should be able to operate retail to go beginning next Friday, one week from today. This temporary plan allows you to be able to access more retailers while also minimizing contact with others. It also sets standards on retailers that ensure safe practices intended to reduce exposure to COVID-19. To learn what those standards are, go to dshs.texas dot gov slash coronavirus. Next, your physical and mental health are important, especially at times like these. Going to parks is an effective way to address those needs. So, state parks will be reopened beginning this coming Monday. Now, in order to reduce possible transmission of COVID-19 in state parks, visitors must wear face coverings or masks. Also, visitors must maintain a distance of at least six feet from people who are not members of the same household. And for now, visitors cannot gather in groups larger than five. Today's executive order also addresses schools. The team of doctors advising us have determined that it would be unsafe to allow students to gather in schools for the foreseeable future. As a result, school classrooms are closed for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year. That includes all public, private, and higher education institutions. 
Now, teachers will be allowed in the classroom for video instruction if they choose, or to perform administrative duties, or to clean out their classrooms. For public education, TEA Commissioner Mike Morath will soon provide more details about how to proceed, and he will explore how to conduct graduation ceremonies. For higher education, Commissioner Harrison Keller will provide similar advice to colleges and universities about how to conclude programs this semester and how to operate semesters this coming summer. Next steps. On Monday, April the 27th, we will announce additional ways to open Texas. In these next 10 days, we will prepare a phased-in strategy to open Texas in a safe way. It will require comprehensive testing and assurances of hospital readiness for COVID-19 patients. It will focus on containing the risk of resurgence of COVID-19 and protecting our most vulnerable Texans. On April the 27th, revised plans will be announced. The new plans will be, will be based on how well contained COVID-19 is in the state of Texas. The, the plans will consider standards to protect our vulnerable residents while allowing others to increase their interactions. They will outline which practices are safe for employers to use. They will consider the possibility of opening more venues, venues like restaurants, movie theaters, and other gathering places that can provide safe distancing practices. They will also consider expanding elective surgeries. We will consider, in fact, all strategies that may open up Texas while also keeping us protected from the expansion of COVID-19. Let me close with this. Texans are battling a colossal challenge, an invisible enemy that has tested our lives and tested our livelihoods. Part of the Texas brand, however, is our ability to overcome challenges. We've overcome far more challenges than we can possibly count. Together, we can bend the curve. Together, we can overcome this pandemic. We can get folks back to work. We can adopt safe strategies that prevent the spread of COVID-19. And step by step, we will open Texas. Next, I'll turn it over to James Huffines. Well, thank you, Governor. These are indeed unprecedented times, but as Texans have proved time and time again, we are a resilient state. And with your leadership, I know we will make it through this together. I am honored to join you and all of the outstanding members of this task force to serve the people of Texas and to help lead our state through this challenge. As the governor said, this team exists to inform him on the best strategies to revitalize the Texas economy and get Texas back to work while protecting, and I'll repeat, while protecting the health and safety of all Texans. And we have already begun working around the clock to accomplish this mission. It's clear that all Texans are hurting economically and are ready to get back to work so that they can begin to earn a paycheck again. But I want to reiterate what the governor said. His main point is that slowing the spread of this virus and keeping Texans safe remains our top priority. Every recommendation, every action by the governor will be informed and based on hard data and the expertise of our chief medical advisors. Everything we do will be medically sound. These nationally recognized advisors are leading experts in their fields, and we will rely on their knowledge and expertise every step of the way. Joining them will be leaders from all sectors of the economy, as well as the public sector leaders. 
They are experts in their fields, ranging from infrastructure to energy to education and economic development. They are already working on innovative solutions to keep Texas businesses reopened while containing the virus. We have a great challenge ahead of us, but the governor has assembled a team that is up to this task. This is not something that can be achieved overnight. It will be a gradual process to reopen Texas, while at the same time keeping all Texans safe. But I assure you, this team will work night and day to restore Texans' livelihoods and to keep the Texas economy the greatest in the nation. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, James. And now, Dr. Hellerstedt. Thank you, Governor Abbott. Um, this is an incredible plan uh, to move forward, uh, looking at the data uh, from the public health and the medical side, as well as looking at the advice of uh, folks who have great experience in business and, and economics. We can do it. I think we see around us the evidence that we have slowed the progression of uh, COVID-19. Uh, we may not be quite over the hump, but we should take great satisfaction and be very encouraged by the progress that we've made so far. COVID-19 did not explode. COVID-19 did not meet the worst uh, predictions that were out there. And it's because of the actions of Texans. So we have the will and the ability to uh, take the steps that are necessary to contain COVID-19. And as we go forward and open Texas, we will require that same uh, discipline in order to be successful while being safe at the same time. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, now, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the great orator once said, uh, it's not the beginning of the end, but the end of the beginning. We may not quite be at the end of the beginning yet, uh, but we are sure making progress because of 29 million Texans who have joined. That's really the task force, the strike force, Governor, is the 29 million Texans all together in this. And so I welcome uh, Mr. Huffines to the team. and. and uh, we're going to continue to work hard. I want to thank our senators, and I know the speaker will thank his House members. Every day we're on the ground working with our businesses to help reopen and answer those questions. And we're going to be bringing a lot of recommendations to you and look forward to working with you on that. I just want to tell Texans um, that we had this great opportunity to lead the country and, in essence, lead the world with the 10th largest economy to really open up our economy. But as we go through these phases, as the governor, Dr. Hellestad, said, it's really important we not let our guard down. We still have to focus on the social distancing issues. We have to respect each other as we have, and we have to be safe first. But I feel like today, Governor, is uh, it is not the end of the beginning, but we are beginning to move to that point, and it will depend on all of us working together. So God bless you, and thank you for what you've already done so far. That's great, Texas. Thank you. Now, Speaker Dennis Bonnet. Thank you, Governor. And I want to begin by thanking the Governor and all of the state employees and the health care workers and the doctors who have worked day and night. We are at a positive place because of their selfless efforts. And as the Lieutenant Governor said, our Senators are working hard, our House members are working incredibly hard. And we're working hard where we are best, and that is in our districts and in our communities, where we are closest to the people we represent. And we're hitting a phase where it is even more important that we show caring and love and compassion for each other than we even already have. As we see pieces of our economy open back up, those of us who wish we were able to maybe be back open in our own businesses have to show the restraint and the respect to those businesses who are able to start operating so that we can continue to be the virus. And the more successful we are in defeating the curve and beating the virus, the more rapidly businesses will be back to normal operations. But we must do it with respect for each other and we must consider each other's desires for an open Texas economy. And the more we do that with regard to the guidelines, the more success we will have on a more rapid timeline. Thank you, Governor, for your continuous leadership. Uh, he has not taken a breath and has worked day and night for Texas. 
and he and this great team, Mr. Huffines and those of you will be leading, we look forward to working and supporting all of you and getting Texas back to being the great Texas that it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be happy to take a few questions. Governor, you mentioned testing. Obviously, that remains a concern for a lot of people who look at that number and see how small of a fraction of the overall population it is. Can you tell us what specific strategies um, and specific benchmarks you may have going forward um, as you reopen the Texas economy, specifically when it comes to testing? Sure. So a core component of the ability for Texas to open up our businesses and open up more uh, of our socializing uh, is going to be tied to uh, the increased testing that we will be conducting. I was on a telephone conference with the president, the vice president, and Dr. Burks yesterday where we were talking about these strategies. So through that phone conference, through multiple conversations that I've had with the vice president, through information that I have from uh, our supply chain team, we know the visibility that we have for a dramatic increase in the amount of testing we will be able to do. Not just testing those who uh, may show symptoms of the coronavirus, but also being able to test uh, entire communities so we have uh, better information uh, ab about what a community setting looks like, about what the infection rate may be. Also, testing strategies where we can identify those who test positive and, and make sure that they are taken care of in ways that they don't spread that virus to others. We know that until there's an immunization or therapeutic drugs uh, that will be able to treat the coronavirus, this can still spread. As a result, people will have to maintain distancing strategies. We will also need to deploy this uh, testing regime uh, across the entire state of Texas to make sure that we continue to contain the coronavirus. Is, is there a specific number of, of testing, expanded testing capacity that people can look forward to, whether it's on a daily or, or weekly basis? Uh, well, in the short term, you can continue daily increases uh, with the information that we have about a, a massive amount of testing capability coming to Texas uh, by late April or early May. It'll be going up quite a bit. Until a firm number can be given, should any businesses be able to open up? And what would that look like in terms of just when we'll know the actual numbers, how quickly? Well, just decisions like what you ask about uh, the ability for businesses to open up will be driven by two things. Uh, one is what our, our medical team advises, and two is what the data shows. If the data continues to show a flatlining and then a decline of the number of people testing positive in, in the state of Texas, uh, that is a signal that we can begin the process of opening up some businesses that adhere to the strictest strategies that will reduce the spread of the coronavirus. That would mean limiting the number of people within a certain business. It will mean following sanitation and safe standards. It could be wearing masks. It could be hand sanitizing. It could be uh, making sure that you're maintaining distance from other employees as well as from customers. Hence, uh, be because we've been going for more than a month now uh, with strategies uh, showing that businesses have been able to provide food and other supplies and products by delivery to cars, uh, by delivery to homes, in ways that contain the spread of the coronavirus, we can at this time safely conclude that such businesses can be expanded throughout the entire retail sector as, as, uh, as long as the retail sector is adhering to the same safe practices that we see stores like HEB, Home Depot, and others utilizing, with this exception. With the expansion now of retail to go, it will not allow people to go into these retail stores. It will simply allow them to be able to pick up items at a drive through si uh, situation or delivery to their home. With the announcements coming on April the 27th, one thing that our team will be working on collaboratively but expeditiously is to evaluate what other types of businesses can reopen and what are the best standards and practices for those businesses to follow. 
Um, as you know, there's a number of legal battles playing out over some of the executive orders you've issued. One of them relates to the, the uh, ban on most abortions due to the um, order you put outlawing um, non-essential surgeries. The new action that you're taking today on surgeries, does that affect the, the effective ban on most abortions? Ultimately, obviously, that will be a decision for course to make. Let me tell you about today's decision. Today's decision, like all decisions, uh, are based upon data and what doctors recommend. The data that was behind the original order was data forecasting uh, that Texas would have strained hospital capacity, strained PPE capacity, uh, and hence there was a need uh, articulated by doctors uh, that we shut down all procedures except for those that were allowed to make sure that we maintain the hospital beds we needed and maintain the PPE that we needed. It turned out in hindsight uh, that we have a great number of hospital beds that are vacant that appear that will not be needed to treat COVID-19 patients. Because of the hospital bed vacancy and because of uh, new supply chain for PPE, we feel that we can begin allowing some more procedures. Uh, the, in my conversations with the doctors before this decision was made, they were very cautious, primarily because of the limited PPE still uh, for current hospital workers. Hence, it has opened up a little bit for more surgical procedures and for diagnostic tests, uh, especially for those who may have serious illness uh, in ways that we do not think will compromise PPE supply and in ways that will ensure that there still will remain uh, an adequate number of hospital beds for anybody who may test positive for COVID-19. So should those, those additional surgeries that you're opening up today, are you allowing them to include abor abortion? Th that is uh, not part of this order. The, the way that the order is written is in terms of what doctors write about the type of, of treatment that is provided. There's maybe always a chance that businesses may push the envelope. What advice do you have for employees who may be concerned about going back to work in any form or fashion of whether it's even to go or uh, kind of as the economy starts reopening? I'll cast advice for both employees and employers, and that is it's understandable that employees may be concerned about going back to work. They may be concerned about contracting COVID-19. Uh, employees should not be coerced uh, into returning to work. Uh, we need to make sure that our employees feel safe uh, and that employers uh, that are beginning, let's say, retail to go, uh, are employing the very best strategies to make sure that they reduce any possible transmission of COVID-19. So those employers have a responsibility that are set out uh, in that website address that I've identified for you to make sure they are practicing safe practices uh, to reduce the transmission of COVID-19. Your previous order telling the statewide order telling Texans to stay home except for essential um, activities, that's, as you know, effective through April 30th. Can you just elaborate on how today's announcements impact that and whether you're going to be making a decision soon or, or today whether to extend that previous order? So the order to stay at home expires on April the 30th. What I announced today were additional exceptions from that stay at home policy. I also uh, articulated that in 10 days on the 27th of April, uh, we will be issuing additional executive orders. And one of the things that we will consider is the elimination of the stay at home policy. The guidelines that were presented to governors yesterday by the president talked about uh, in this next phase, if, if the data lines up, is a possibility of going back to the standard that we had in Texas before the stay at home standard, which was uh, encouraging people to stay at home, uh, but allowing people to gather in groups of 10 or less. We would be able to move to that standard if the data shows uh, that we are beginning uh, to continue to reduce uh, the number of people testing positive for COVID-19, showing that we are uh, effective in containing the spread of COVID-19. 
what about a possible resurgence? Uh, we've heard from economists even just the concerns about reopening and kind of a yo-yo effect on the economy if you're opening only to see more uh, cases and kind of being right back where we were to begin with and then having to close down again and reopen. Do you think that that's the smartest move? Well, what uh, the, the president's advisors have said, uh, what all the medical community says, uh, is that uh, when you begin to reopen an economy uh, with a disease that has uh, no immunization for it, uh, there is the possibility of an increase in spread. So we know in advance uh, that all of the economies, not just across America, but across the entire world, as they begin to open up, there is the possibility of a resurgence of COVID-19. That's one of the reasons why we will utilize enhanced testing strategies, uh, enhanced containment strategies, to make sure that when it does arise, we will be able to contain it. What we have shown and what we believe we will be able to continue to show is that we are able to increase economic activity, increase the ability of people to, to go about with a more nor normalization of their lives, while at the same time containing the spread and when it does arise, be able to provide targeted solutions. Now, there were some other strategies that were mentioned uh, by the president's team, and that is consideration if, if a spread does arise in a very meaningful way, there may need to be pockets of the economy shut down. Let me give you an example. If a spread arises, it more likely would arise in a particular community, not statewide. There may be a need to have a stricter standard for that one community as opposed to statewide. But we can be flexible in these strategies, and businesses need to understand that we can open so long as these businesses and all Texans make sure they are practicing the safest standards that will prevent the spread of, of COVID-19. If we do that, we will be able to continue to open up our economy. Just going back to testing quickly, just to drill down on this, can you explain where this expanded testing capacity is, is coming from and specifically what kind of, of testing uh, sure. is going to be part of that expanded testing? Sure. The, the new testing comes from the private sector. The, the names of all these entities uh, probably are more easily summoned uh, by Dr. Hellerstadt. Uh, if you want to talk about some of these new testing strategies, then I will elaborate further. Thank you, Governor. Uh, there are, again, basically two streams, if you will, for testing. One is in public health and one is through the private sector. We're actually increasing our capacity in public health, uh, uh, we, we believe, uh, significantly um, by adding new platforms, if you will, new ways of, provide, of doing the um, uh, PCR assay that is, uh, if you will, the gold standard for testing. So we're adding that. The other thing that we're adding, we're starting to see a more reliable supply of the what are called swab collection kits. So in other words, that's how you actually obtain the specimen from from the patient to, to do the testing. And those have been in very short supply, but we're seeing very encouraging signs that more and more of those testing kits will be on the way. And more and more testing kits is actually going to enable us to, uh, if you will, maximize the use of the laboratory-based testing that we already have. And then there are new uh, technologies that are coming along uh, every day um, that uh, add to that capacity. Yeah, I, was, I guess I was, I was trying to get, get at how much of that share is going to be, like, for example, these new rapid tests instead of where you can get a, a quick answer instead of having to send the swab off to a lab uh, or Well, it, it is, it's twofold. One is, uh, as Dr. Hellestet was making clear, and that is uh, there are new collection strategies uh, that will be used, uh, but also there are new testing capacities that will be used. Uh, you've heard about Roche, for example, and there's many other uh, private sector providers like that that are providing uh, these new massive uh, testing capabilities once the collection is done uh, that will lead to greater results. And these are part of the strategies that uh, Dr. Burks and the president's team has been talking to us about uh, that are coming online as we speak. Uh, I just had one last question about unemployment benefits uh, and the state basically running out of money to be able to pay unemployment benefits. Um, how will that be remedied and just kind of what does that mean for the economy as we're talking right now? So uh, the, the question concerns unemployment benefits and understand this and, and that is uh, the 
uh, Texas Workforce Commission uh, has been now working seven days a week uh, to make sure that they're going to be able to process all unemployment benefit claims. Uh, my recollection is there's been well over a million Texans who have uh, been able to be successfully processed for unemployment benefits, and something like a, a half a billion dollars has been paid out. One thing that Congress passed uh, that is so helpful uh, is a massive amount of money uh, that provides more unemployment benefits for a longer period of time. So there should be plenty of money uh, for those who are unemployed. Then on top of that, we know that Congress is considering uh, additional programs that be, could be coming out uh, as soon as May that will provide even more funding uh, to states uh, as needs arise. Will there be any need for tax hikes for businesses? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Could you? Sorry. Any need for tax hikes for businesses? Any new tax breaks for businesses? Tax hikes for businesses. Tax hikes? For unemployment. For unemployment benefits Ta to help. But you're asking for about tax hikes? Yeah, for paying for. Yeah, well, well, I, again, I can't, I can't understand the question. How would the tax hikes uh, uh, in Texas? Uh, again, let's, let's go back. One thing Congress and the president uh, were adamant about achieving is, is making sure that they are providing uh, an extraordinary, un unprecedented amount of unemployment benefits uh, for all workers across the country. So that for one, uh, they will continue the, the flow of unemployment, uh, unemployment benefits. But remember this, part of their goal, part of the president's goal, and our goal is the best strategy to reduce unemployment benefits is to increase jobs. And part of establishing retail to go, part of what we will announce on April the 27th, part of what we will announce during the course of the month of May, will be increasing jobs. It will be getting people off of the unemployment rolls. It will be giving people what they want, and that is the ability to return to work. Thanks.